as it's uh, evening time where this video is being made I'll just say good evening everyone now if you go on to Wikipedia to browse you uh, Wikipedia or other search engines you will find many things that say stuff like things you didn't know about such a body or things you didn't know about animals trees uh, countries you name it it's all on there now I've happened to make a post about things you didn't know about Evolution Aqua and um, it was quite an innocent post all factual of course but um, I think it's about time I, I made a video of um, things you didn't know about Peter Waddington and that's me now it's things you didn't know it's not the stuff that's already been uh, for instance my CV on uh, that you can check out on www.koikichi.com because it's all there and people have seen it most people by now know it no I, I'd like to put on a few things you didn't know about Peter Waddington well three things do spring to mind at the moment uh, the first one covers the subject of Hikui and Shimi now I'll, 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 um, I'll speak about these separately and, and start with Hikui Hikui is a term used for in Japan for cancer of the red skin or cancer of the red pigment so Hikui he means red Kui means cancer now Hikui only affects the red pigmentation on any koi that has red pigmentation and I mean non-metallic red pigmentation uh, so if you look into it you know it will affect or it could affect varieties such as Kohaku, Sanki, Showa, Hiyotsuri and of course Benigoy now I should start by saying Hikui looks uh, unsightly but it is not life-threatening and it it, 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 uh, it doesn't transfer from koi to koi no but if judges see a koi with the Hikui at a koi show they will severely downpoint that koi now coming back to reality 
people could pay small fortunes for top quality koi to be entered at shows of course and overnight these koi can be reduced to little more than pond fillers. Their once known value has now been reduced to just about zero. Now, as far as I'm aware, and there's many people tried this before, there is no way that anyone can cure Hikui. But I really believe that Peter Waddington has stopped any new occurrences of Hikui. And that was by simply ensuring that the filter you're using on your pond is always perfectly clean. Now, this applies to all filters that I know of. Just keep them clean at all times and you won't see your koi ever showing signs, new signs of hikui. If you had koi in your pond before you decided to keep your filters clean, those signs will still be there, but there will be no new cases. Similar things can be said of shimmy and the translation from Japanese to English of the word uh, shimmy is uh, freckle. Now this does not simply affect the red pigment. Shimmy can occur in just about every type of koi you care to name. It is a black freckle that suddenly appears on the skin of the koi for apparently no reason. Now, yes, it, shimmy can be removed from time to time if you're lucky and uh, adept at doing this, but you can rarely remove it completely without leaving a trace. Uh, and um, this all comes back to the cleanliness of the filters. And I have successfully, with my filters, achieved that for well over 10 years now. Like I say, if everyone keeps their filters spotlessly clean, it doesn't matter what type of filter you have. Some filters take an age to clean but my filters can be perfectly cleaned out in a matter of seconds so hikui and shimmy are one point moving on now to the second point of things you didn't know about peter waddington I don't know why this is. I really have no idea why this is. But my filter systems start up instantly. 
when I say this, um, I have experienced starting up filters for many, many, many years. And generally, <coughs> it involves waiting for months sometimes to see the fish in the newly filtered pond behaving erratically. Some may gasp at the surface of the water. Others may try to escape the water they're in. And we have been told to then start changing lots of water and stopping all feeding. Now, I don't know why you should give me credit for this, but it is credit to me. My filters don't have to face any startup process. They start up immediately. So that's the second point I'd like to discuss. One moment. The third point is I've reduced the size of the filter required on a particular body of water significantly. If you remember the days back when we were all advised to allow 33% of the area of our pond to the filtration system. Now, to give you an idea, my pond at the moment holds 17,500 gallons. And if I had chosen to devote 33% of the pond to the filter system, then I would be left with a pond that only holds 11,500 gallons as opposed to 17,500. However, today my pond still holds 17,500 gallons of water. But my filter system only holds 55 gallons of water. I'm trying to make some kind of comparison with what we were once told and what can now be done <coughs> because times change. So these are just three of the things you don't know about Peter Waddington, but you know them now because I've just told you. And I think these things have particular importance. Thanks for watching and listening.